It was a winter night, January 26, 1700. No European settlements, no newspapers, just the moon above the Pacific Northwest and the quiet before the quake. Then without warning, the earth tore wide open. From Northern California to Vancouver Island, 600 miles of coastline lurched violently as one plate slipped beneath another. The Cascadia subduction zone had awakened. For a few horrifying minutes, the ground convulsed, coastlines sank, rivers reversed, and then silence, followed by the hiss of the ocean pulling back before it roared ashore in a wall of water. For more than two centuries, the outside world never even knew this event happened. There were no written records, only indigenous stories passed from generation to generation. They told of a night when the earth shook and the sea rose up to swallow entire villages whole. The Quileute spoke of Thunderbird battling whale, a fight so fierce the ground itself trembled. The Hawaiian told of a wave that swept away entire longhouses. And the Nuchanul remembered a village that sank beneath the sea and was never seen again. What sounded like myth would turn out to be memory. Fast forward to the late 20th century. Scientists began finding clues that something enormous had happened. Not recently, but not so long ago either. Along the coast of Washington and Oregon, researchers discovered eerie stands of dead trees, ghost forests, their roots preserved in tidal mud. They hadn't died of disease or fire, the land itself had suddenly dropped several feet, flooding their roots with salt water. Using tree ring dating, U.S. Geological Survey scientist Brian Atwater and University of Washington's David Yamaguchi pinpointed the death of those trees to the winter of 1699 to 1700. Then came the sand layers, thin ribbons of ocean sand buried beneath coastal marshes, a signature of a tsunami. Radiocarbon dating told the same story around the year 1700. Still one mystery remained. When exactly had this actually happened? Well, the answer came from clear across the ocean. In Japan, ancient scrolls told of a strange tsunami that struck the East Coast on January 27, 1700. It came without warning, no earthquake beforehand. Villages were flooded, boats smashed, and officials recorded it as an orphan tsunami. In other words, a wave with no parent quake. Then in 1996, a team led by Kenji Satake connected the dots. The timing, the wave height, the travel time across the Pacific all matched perfectly. The parent quake wasn't missing. It was the Cascadia. Suddenly, every piece fit. The ghost forest, the buried sand, the Japanese records, and the indigenous stories that held the truth for more than 300 years. Today, geologists know the Cascadia subduction zone is capable of producing magnitude 9 earthquakes, among the largest on Earth. They happen roughly every 300 to 600 years. And the last one was January 26, 1700. That's 325 years ago, well within the predicted range. But the problem with predicting earthquakes is it's not an exact science. In fact, sometimes the science doesn't really help. And sometimes they're back to back within a century, and sometimes there's 2,000 years in between. So the bottom line is we don't know. The damage to infrastructure west of the mountains will be enormous, and human displacement will affect central Oregon. If there's a silver lining, it's that the tsunami will do most of the damage, and that tsunami is not gonna make it over the mountains. And the, the really good news here, so since 2015, when the New Yorker article came out called the really big one and terrified everybody, uh, there's been tremendous improvement in terms of how aware people are and what we're doing to get ready for it. And the moment I say that, there's also a huge way to go. For Central Oregon Daily News, I'm Scott Elness.